using a MIDI controller on stage allows you to not look like you're checking your email on stage. It allows you to actually move your computer out of the way and stay focused on the performance. In this video, I want to show you how in less than five minutes, you can set up and configure your MIDI controller for live performance. So let's dive in. Now, for the sake of this video, I'm going to be using the Looptimus by Loop Community. And the first thing I want to mention uh, when it comes to using a MIDI controller is how to connect to your computer. The most important thing here is to, uh, if at all possible, connect directly to your computer. Now, in my case, I've got a USB cable here. I'm going to plug this into my MIDI controller on the back, right? So we'll plug it in right there. That's what that connection looks like. The other end of this is going into a USB hub because I've got a newer Mac computer. It takes USB-C and that's converting. It's got multiple uh, connections on it. It's converting from USB-A to USB-C. That's perfectly fine in this case. If you can plug directly into your computer, do that if at all possible. If not, you can use a USB hub. If at all possible, use a powered USB hub. But the most important thing I want to stress here is do not use a USB extender. What I mean by that is a, a adapter that you can buy you know, for super cheap cheap on Amazon that you plug one end of your USB cable in and then plug the other end into your computer. Those always fail. It may seem like a great idea to, at, right now because you can you know, move your computer side of stage, but I do not suggest doing that. Plug directly into your computer or a powered USB hub or worst case, a USB hub connected to your computer. Okay. So we've got our MIDI controller uh, connected. Now let's go into preferences in Ableton Live. So I'll take you into Ableton Live. I'm going to go to command comma, which is uh, my uh, shortcut on Mac on PC. It's control comma. And I want to go to the link tempo MIDI section of preferences. Now, the first thing I want to point out, you see under MIDI here that we do have this control surface area here. This is really for if you're using a MIDI controller that has some preset mappings that work out of the box with Ableton Live. Um, I don't recommend using those unless you're using a controller. Like you could see I have Ableset listed here. In order for me to use Ableset, I have to use a control surface. Um, I don't like using that though, because uh, I guess I'm kind of particular. I want to tell Ableton exactly what I want it to do, where I want it to go, as opposed to it trying to pre-map things for me automatically. So if you want to be stubborn like me, skip control surfaces, unless you're using a controller that has some really cool pre-mapped stuff. Uh, but I don't typically suggest those for live performance. Okay. Next thing I want to mention here is takeover uh, mode. Now, if you're using a MIDI controller like this, this is the Korg Nano Control 2. It's got some faders on it. Uh, if I'm using faders, uh, and in particular, these faders are not motorized, I need a way to make sure that the faders on my MIDI controller are always in sync with Ableton Live. Uh, and because they're not motorized, it's not like I can move the controller in live to have the faders adjust there. So uh, Ableton has created something called takeover mode. So if you're MIDI controller has faders, I would suggest using value scaling. And what that means is essentially uh, Ableton is going to do some smart math to say, okay, uh, his uh, fader is at 50% and it's going to take from zero to 50 and say, okay, uh, he just moved the fader down 10% and it's going to apply a 10% change to your live set. That's opposed to using, uh, as opposed to using none, which if I use none, then it means when I touch my fader, live is going to jump to match the value of my fader, which is not good great uh, because it's going to you know provide some jumps from something that's uh, you know a big drastic change uh, or pickup pickup used to be the default but it was a real pain because you had to move the fader on your device and then once it it picked up and it met the fader the value of live then it started uh, acting and, and making changes value scaling though as soon as you move that fader it makes changes in live but does it to where it's smooth and doesn't jump so if you've got faders on your MIDI controller make sure your takeover mode is set to value scaling now now, let's actually get to uh, to using this. Now, when it comes to your MIDI controller, you're going to see both an input and an output. Based on your controller, you may see additional ports. But in this case, we're just going to deal with the first port here that we have. So I've got input. It says loop to miss. Uh, the first option I have here is track. If I want to use my MIDI controller to send MIDI information to Live's tracks to record with, then I'm going to enable track. In this case, I'm not. Okay, if I want to sync uh, Ableton Live to my MIDI controller, uh, uh, I'm going to send MIDI clock to Ableton Live. I'm going to send uh, information as to where I want that uh, live set to be, uh, live's transport, where I want it to jump around uh, in my session, then I would enable sync. In this case, I don't. But the last one here, in most cases, is what we're going to use. If you want to remotely control live using your MIDI controller uh, to where you press a button on your MIDI controller, it does something in live, you're going to enable remote. Now, finally, here in live, if your MIDI controller supports MPE or MIDI polyphonic expression, you could enable that. In this case, uh, 
my controller does not. Now on the output side of this, if you want to sync, say like the fader state of Ableton Live to your controller, if it has motorized faders um, uh, or it's touch OSC, something like that, you can enable remote. If you want to sync your MIDI controller to Ableton Live, you can enable sync. Uh, that's for tempo uh, information. Uh, and if you want to send MIDI from Ableton Live's tracks to your MIDI controller, uh, then you could enable track. In this case, I don't need any of that for my MIDI controller. I'm just remote controlling this. Now, finally, this is not about how to actually MIDI map. We've talked about that in previous videos. But if I do Command M, I click a button here uh, on my controller. I click a button live. That's going to map. Okay. And now I can navigate and control my live set completely from my MIDI controller, which again, gives me the freedom and flexibility to not look like I'm checking my email on stage, but even more important than that, it allows me to move my computer uh, over and stay focused uh, on the performance. So that's a look at how to set up and configure your MIDI controller for live performance. If you want some suggestions on what MIDI controller you should use, what's the best foot controller? Uh, what's the best keyboard controller, grid based controller? I put together a free gear guide that has all of those suggestions. You can find that by heading to from studio to stage.com slash gear. That's from studiotostage.com slash gear. You can download my free gear guide that, again, has suggestions for everything that you can know and trust that's going to work well on stage. Um, and finally, I post a new video every single day at 10 a.m. Central. So if you're interested in gear, we post gear-related content on Saturdays. So make sure you join us on Saturdays. And then every other day of the week, there'll be a new video you'll find here on the channel. If you want to see that, hit subscribe. Make sure to hit the bell icon so you're notified when I post new content. And I hope to see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye.